We had it. It was right there. Two years. Two years. He had the box open. Why? I, I don't I don't understand this. Oh, this is not going to be a good one. Um, episode 18 of The Flash starts right now. So it's The Flash, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 18, The Man in the Yellow Tie or something. <laughs> and to that effect, I am so upset right now. And it's your boy Icon with some DC TV, and we're talking about The Flash, <laughs> but there's only one thing to talk about in this particular episode. But at the risk of me blowing a complete gasket, we're gonna review the episode as normal, and I'm gonna res I'm gonna save the rant for the end. So this episode starts. Um, it actually starts with Mina. And she's running through the forest because she's training with Barry. While she's training with Barry, she accidentally blasts him in the back with with um with some speed force energy, and Barry goes down for the count. Um, once Barry goes down, then he's just like, "Oh, your speed force is is interacting funny with my speed force." And then you know they were just like, you know, maybe we should look into your machine to see what's going on, just to make sure that you're okay. So Barry goes down to her to fast track laboratories. Um, he goes as Barry Allen, not the Flash, because Mina doesn't know that Barry's the Flash yet. You know they were talking about the machine and how it was put together, and then Mina said that although she was the one that did certain things on the machine, she wasn't the person who put the technical bolts, nuts and bolts in. And she goes, "Let me introduce you to the man." that actually built the machine, Earbarthon. And I'm like, holy shit. And I, <laughs> I need to say right out the gate, despite like my anger um, based on one particular thing that happened, this overall was actually a damn good episode of The Flash. It was a really good episode of The Flash. So Barry, he meets Earbarthon again. Thawne, for some reason, he doesn't have his memories. He doesn't remember who he is. And he's talking to Barry. And then Barry's like, oh, you're the reverse Flash, you son of a bitch. And you killed my mom. And then he's like, I'm not that person. I'm not that guy. And then he's like, the lies. And then Barry, you know, then the both. Yeah, then Barry, he ends up leaving. He talks to Chester. And he's just like, hey, listen, did Argus report that Earbart Thawne had escaped? Because I just saw him in Fast Track Labs talking to Mina. And he has his original face. <laughs> like, as we know, if you've been, you know, watching The Flash since day one, the 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 thawne that we see with the with the yellow hair he is the actual earbart thawne he came to the past and he killed the original harrison wells and he stole harrison wells's face and paraded it around as harrison wells that's why there's another version of him that looks like harrison wells sitting in prison so now <laughs> so so barry goes to that prison and he goes just to see if he's still there and then he's like dude why how did you escape how did you get your speed back? And then Earbart Thawne, like Wells Thawne, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then Barry's like, bullshit. He's like, I just saw you at Fast Track Labs. How did you get your speed? And then he's like, is that another copy of you, another version of you? And then, you know, and then that's when Thawne was just like, he was like, there are no more copies of me. He was like, you took my speed. He's like, you killed every version of me. Like, I don't exist. So then they were just like, well, maybe this is a different version of you in another timeline. Because we remember when Barry did um, Flashpoint, there was a reverse Flash there in Flashpoint with him. And he was like, maybe it was that, you know, that reverse flash, like maybe he escaped somehow because he was part of a different timeline. So they're trying to put theories together and put situations together. And then that's when um, Wells Thawne had told him, he said, listen, if there's a new Earbart Thawne out there, then whoever this Mina girl is, she's in trouble. Barry showed him a picture of the machine and, you know, he was just like, yeah, I built that machine in the future. And he said, I built it to tap into the speed force so I could, so I could become a speedster. But it inadvertently tapped into the negative speed force. And I accidentally got my negative speed power. He's like, that's how I became like a negative speedster. So now he's just like, if Mina absorbs too much of his power, she's on the fast track of becoming a negative speedster as well. Mina did like a cool little intro where she did the whole Barry intro from the, from the pilot episode, like to understand what I'm about to tell you. So that was pretty cool. And then when we get... When we get back to um, when we get back to Star Labs, there's a scene where with Cecile and Cecile, there's a lot that went on in this episode. Cecile's at the bank. She's trying to cash a check or something. And I, I love Cecile. And a guy comes in to rob the bank. When the guy comes in to rob the bank, um, Cecile basically started like hyperventilating and she tapped into some pretty powerful power. And it gets to the point where now not only does she have the ability to feel, read someone's emotions, she can project emotions into other people. And her power got strong to the point where she basically brain blasted the three people that were trying to rob the bank. 
And then she was just like, oh shit, she's like, I got some new power. So she goes back to Star Labs and then, you know, like they run tests on her and they're just like, you know, like your, your psychic abilities actually got increased, it, increased like 10 million fold. And then she's just like, oh, so I got more power. But then Barry was like, yo, just, just let's slow you a little behind down. And he said, let's run some more tests and make sure that you're okay. And then they put the Cecile thing to the side and I thought we were done with the Cecile thing. I was like, okay, cool, but fear not. <laughs> so then after Barry, after Barry leaves Earbart Thawne, and he goes back to Central City to regroup with the rest of the gang. Earbart Thawne then says, well, if this day couldn't get any, you know, couldn't get any more interesting, he's gone now, so you can come out of the shadows, John. And then John Diggle comes out of the shadows because he was downstairs in the prison talking to Earbart Thawne. And I got very excited, and that excitement was quickly doused <laughs> with utter disappointment. But we're gonna, we're, more, more on that, more on that later. So now Earbart Thawne Wells is having a conversation with John Diggle from Arrow but Barry's on his way back to Central City. He goes to Fast Track Labs, and then Mina's there. She's in the machine. She's getting ready to use the machine. Barry shows up, and he's like, don't do it because the machine is going to corrupt you with negative sp speed force energy. And then he was like, this guy right here, you know, like, he's Earbart Thawne from the future, and he's a lying son of a bitch, and he's an evil speedster, and he's like, I ought to take you to Iron Heights. And then Mina was like, no, you can't do that. And then she presses the button. She uses the machine anyway. It fills her up with the negative speed force energy. She turns into a negative speedster, just like you know Thawne and just like you know like um, Nora did and then she goes and she runs rough shot blast Barry and runs away Barry gets up and then you know he's talking to Thawne and then he's just like why he was like what happened you know what's the problem and then that's when we go through the story about how the two of them met first of all when Irabard had his job interview with Mina she was a total bitch to him during the interview and then and then when he got up and because he, he saw that she was trying to work on a speed force equation because she was trying to create a speedster when he got up she was berating him during this interview. She was like, oh, this is the worst resume I've ever seen. You're a joke and you suck. And then when he gets up to go look at the board to do her speed force equation, she got the nerve to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? She's like, am I boring you? I'm like, woman, you cursing him out right now. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, this is totally unprofessional. But then, you know, he ends up doing the equation for her. He solves the equation. And then she's like, oh my God. And, you know, and then like she ends up giving him the job. The two of them work on the machine. And he told Barry that he had lost, they said that he has selective memory. Like, he lost his memory and he said he can't remember anything past a year. That's dangerous because if he truly is Earbart Thawne, like, you know, the enemy of the Flash, if he does get his memories back and becomes a negative speedster again, he's going right after to kill Barry and kill everybody else. And that's what Barry was concerned about. But, you know, he did say that he lost his memory, which Barry, Barry didn't buy that, that, that BS. And then, <laughs> and then after that, then, you know, Barry told him, well, Thawne told Barry, he was like, listen, when I got here, he was like, you know, she hired me. We were working on the machine together. Only one person could use the machine and it was supposed to be me, but Mina had a heart condition. And because she had the heart condition, the only way to save her from the heart condition was to put her in the machine. So because he doesn't have his memories and because he fell in love with this girl, he chose to save her life by putting her in the machine over giving himself the speed force power that he so richly desired. So he puts her in the machine. She ends up, you know, like she ends up getting, that's how she got her super speed. And then that's how the whole fire thing happened and blah, blah, blah. The third. So, then after, so then after that, so then I, so he was just like, you know, I don't want to hurt her. I want to help her because I love her and blah, blah, blah. So then Barry's like, okay. He was like, I'm going to trust you and let's try to actually take her down. So they try to find her. They find her siphoning like electricity from like different places, from the sky, from dams, from all different sorts of things. Barry shows up and tries to stop her. The two of them get into it a little bit. They have a speed race. And then, you know, that's when, you know, Chester had said, he said, just, just allow her to burn off all that negative speed force energy. But, well, that actually did work. She burnt off the negative speed force energy, and then after she burnt off the energy, then it started, there was a lightning storm, and then she tapped into the lightning storm. She blasted Barry and knocked Barry down, and then after she knocked Barry down, she was getting ready to, you know, like she was getting ready to power up, and she was going to run roughshod and kill the Flash, and then that's when Thawne showed up, because remember, he still doesn't have his memories. Thawne showed up, and then he was just like, oh, come back to me, Mina, I love you, and then there was like a montage, you know, with all this, all this stuff, and then Mina came back to him, and then like she burnt out the negative speed force energy, and then all was well. They go back to Fast Fast Track Labs, they say that the speed force is out of her system, and then both her and Thawne was just like, well, if we can't control like the negative speed force, she said if we can't use this machine, she said the machine was supposed to be used to help people. She said if we can't use the machine 
to keep me from turning into a supervillain, then it's not worth using the machine. But Barry said that there might be a way, and he said, you know, I'll come back later and we'll talk about it and see how we can help get the machine, you know, get the machine in order. And then, and then we got, then we got another. A lot happened in this episode. <laughs> and then after that, um, regarding the Thawne thing. Chester said that he spoke to a mutual friend. The mutual friend ended up calling. He put the call up on the big screen and it was Ray Palmer. Ray Palmer said that he's actually doing the Chester P. Runk Foundation where he's bringing in aspiring, you know, like Inventus and everything. And he said that they accidentally tapped into the dark part of the multiverse. And I'm just like, so now, now we're acknowledging that the multiverse is back because they said that there was no other Earth again. But anyway, that's relevant. So, <laughs> so then, you know, like Ray ended up saying he told the story. There's a, there was also a lot of flashbacks in this episode too from other shows. He told the story about the the Thawne that got picked up with the time wraiths and he was put there, you know, to protect a fixed point in history on Legends of Tomorrow. If you don't watch Legends of Tomorrow, basically what happened on a season of Legends of Tomorrow, Earbart Thawne was one of the villains. I believe it was season three. He ended up getting taken away by the time race because he was abusing time force and speed force power. They put him in a situation where his penance for violating the laws of time was to guard a fixed point in history. The fixed point that he was entrusted to guard was a point where um, some guy got shot. It was supposed to like, some guy got shot that started a war. He was supposed to protect history to make sure that guy gets shot. The legends show up, they fuck the whole thing up because that's what the legends do and then Thawne ended up dying instead, you know, trying to like, you know, protect, you know, like history. He actually got killed by a robot version of Sarah, which was funny. What they said was, because after Ray told them that story, Chester came up with the idea that, well, Barry and Chester both said that maybe after Thawne got killed on that episode of Legends, the time race probably brought him back to life and just dropped him at this point in time. I, and I don't know why. I mean, that's the theory that we're going with. But my whole thing is just a quick thing on Thawne. Because he specifically said he doesn't have his memories, I'm not buying the whole thing of him being reformed. The moment he gets his memories back, the moment he gets his, and there's a reason why Mina was in the machine and not him. If he gets his speed back, if he puts himself in the machine, the moment he gets his speed back and he, and he once again gets negative speed force back into his system, I promise you he's going to turn back into the old Thawne, he's going to get his memories back, and he's going to run roughshod. That's why they're keeping him out of the machine and why we're getting Mina as a speedster instead of him. But anyway, so, you know, so that was the theory that that was the, the Thawne version that the time rapes had dropped off, which they're just like, well, if he's a good guy, then, you know, hell, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> you know, like, we'll take it for the moment. And then that's when, that's when all the other stuff started. And then we got a scene with Caitlyn um killer frost boyfriend blaine he was talking to caitlin and then he told caitlin he was like yo bring your ass over here back to your apartment because he said I, I know how to bring killer frost back and then she was like we can't bring her back because barry took the gun and he was like we don't need the gun and then he showed her the blueprints for a machine and i i isn't that the, i feel like that's the machine that mina just put herself in it looked exact so if they're gonna use the negative tachyon particle accelerator machine that was that just gave Mina artificial speed. If they're gonna use that same thing, if the, if that's even the machine, like I could be wrong. Hell, for all I know, that could be the time machine that um that not um Constantine on Legends of Tomorrow have built. But anyway, whatever that machine is, they're gonna try to use that machine to bring back Killer Frost. So, so and if it is the machine that Mina's using, when Killer Frost come back, she's gonna be evil as all hell. And then um yeah, and then after that, so I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, so. This was cool. Everything was nice with the Flash, like a good episode of the Flash. And then I forgot about Cecile. <laughs> so Cecile, this woman was getting robbed, you know, by by knife point. And then and then the guy ended up having like brain contusions, and he passed out on the floor. The woman took her purse and ran off. And then Cecile comes stroll her sexy behind around the corner with the tight leather and everything, talking about that's that's more like it. Because now Cecile's going out fighting crime. <laughs> and I remember, I remember before when Blockbuster had showed up. And I believe it was Flash. Um, it was Flash, Allegra, and Cecile. They they all showed up to try to stop Blockbuster. I remember making fun of that scene because I'm like, why is Cecile here? <laughs> like, I was like, there was no reason for Cecile to be here. But I'm like, I guess they shut me up because now the woman has like superpowers. She has like stronger power now. And now she's just gonna, she's like to hell with Team Flash. She's just walking around brain blasting people. And I'm like, that's gonna become a thing. And then just when you think it's over, you know, like just when you think it's over, we get another scene where 
Thawne is in the, his prison cell and then Dion shows up and then he's just like, oh, Thawne, it's time to give you back your speed so you could fulfill your destiny. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> and what happened to Iris? Where's Iris? What happened to Joe? Where's the time stone that Joe got from Damien Dark? Like, why is Cecile fighting crime? Where is D Why is Dion a bad guy? Are there two Dion's? Is there a negative Dion and a positive Dion? Because Dion also brought Nora into the still force to save Barry. So I am so confused right now with what's happening. Killer Frost is about to come back to life and we're not talking about that either. And there's just like, there's just so, there's so many things that's happening here, but none of that matters. None of that matters for now because the one takeaway from this episode, the one thing about this episode that stood out more than anything. So <laughs> let's just get into this one. So, it is no secret that Arrow is my number one favorite CW DC TV show, period, point blank period. When Arrow ended and John Diggle got the, the Green Lantern, I'm just going to call it the Green, we know it's the goddamn Green Lantern, right? When he was presented the power of the Green Lantern, I got excited because I was like, wow, he's finally going to become the Green Lantern. And then... I was, I, was, I was perfectly fine leaving it right there. We could have just left it there and I would have been good. Then over the course of the next two years, he pops up literally. Diggle showed up on every single superhero show except Black Lightning, which I find hilarious because Lynn is actually his stepsister. And Lynn mentioned him on Black Lightning. She said, I used to go hunting with my brother, John. It's a shame we never actually got that scene. There was an episode of Supergirl that Diggle was on where he was talking to Brainy about ignoring, you know, like the ring power. And then when he left the tower, he said, it's time to go get to work or it's time to become a hero or it's time to do something, saying that he was actually going to accept the power of the Green Lantern ring. And then even Brainy himself, Brainy's from the future, Brainy knew he was going to become the Green Lantern because he made a little smirk on his face because when Diggle left and said it's time to become a hero, he was like, you sure are, John. Or something. He said something to that. He said something to that effect that let you know that he was trying to become the Green Lantern. When he was on, um, when he was on Batwoman, he was on Batwoman twice. When he was on Batwoman, he helped. And, and also in the Supergirl episode, he inspired Kelly to become the new Guardian. When he was on Batwoman the first time, he inspired Luce, Luke Fox to become Batwing. When he was on Batwoman the second time, he wanted Luke to try to open the box for him because he couldn't get the box open. When he showed up on Superman and Lois, he was talking to Lois and he was talking to the general about Oliver and all the rest of the heroes. And then he even said to Lois, he said, I had an opportunity to become a different type of hero, but I turned it down because of my family. When he was on The Flash, he was having like mental, like, you know, like, contusions or something because the power of the green lantern ring was calling out to him and it was basically saying john put the goddamn ring on john <laughs> like put the ring on and he was going crazy because the ring was talking to him this was this is like a, and then and then like an old version of him popped up on legends of tomorrow from back in the day so now we're getting all these john diggle teases we're getting all this john diggle stuff we heard that he's supposed to have his own tv show called um dcu or justice U or something like that where he's gonna lead like a group of like new heroes which is funny because he spent that whole week on dc tv inspiring a new group of heroes so now we're thinking he's on the path. Like, you know, like he he's about to become the Green Lantern. Like he has to become the Green Lantern. So then he shows up on the Flash because he's talking to Earbart Thawne in the jail cell, looking like he hasn't slept in 10 weeks. And he tells Earbart Thawne that he can't get the ring open and he's like combed the globe, he's combed the planet and he doesn't know how to get the box open. And Thawne said, okay, I can help you get the box open. The only thing that I ask is that when you get the damn thing open, you let me see what's inside. He said that these cubes present themselves to a person who's at a crossroads. And he was like, what was going through your mind when it opened the first time? And he said, and that was a funny line because when the two of them finally, when the two of them saw each other for the first time, John was like, the last time I saw you, you were pretending that you needed a wheelchair. And he said, last time I saw you, Oliver Queen was still alive. And I was like, damn, <laughs> I was like burn. So that hurt. That one, that, that one hurt a little bit. But then he was just like, you know, the box presented itself to you because you're special, because you're supposed to, you know, like, you know, take the power. So he was like, tap into the power, John. He was like, think. And then it was cool because when, when Thawne gave him that speech, 
it reminded me of the speech that he gave Barry when he was trying to teach Barry how to phase through walls for the first time. But he was telling John, he was just like, feel the feel the cosmic energy, feel the cosmos, feel the power, let it all absorb you, let it guide you, let it feed you. And now we're seeing all these flashbacks of Diggle doing different things on different parts of the show, on different parts of different different Arrowverse shows. We're seeing, we're hearing like lyric, like like voiceover flashbacks of him talking about, you know, like it's a strange world with strange stuff in it and all this other stuff and i'm getting really excited because i'm just like dude i'm like yeah like here it comes you know he's just like the cosmos is yours john the power is yours for the taking and thought even asked him he said the box closed on you before because you weren't willing to accept the power he was like are you ready to accept the power now and he said yes so i'm like here we go it's john diggle time green lantern time baby and then when he gets to the point where he's just like take the power and be the person who you're supposed to be this money he took the box closed it he threw it away and said no why <laughs> like why like him throw like when he threw that box away it was like he had the arrow verse in the palm of his hands and chucked it like it reminded me of the scene in the last Jedi, the the last Jedi movie, the the second the second movie, where Rey ended up seeing Luke Skywalker and she gave him the lightsaber that was his dad's lightsaber before him, and then he takes the lightsaber and tosses it over the cliff. I'm like, what is happening right now? He rejected the power, like he said no. Two years, two years of teasing him with this goddamn ring. He was in the crossover where the Flash from Earth 90 came to him and said, wow, John, you're not wearing your ring. There were so many teases throughout the course of Arrowverse history where they talked about him having this ring. Brainy acknowledged that he was supposed to have this ring. He said no. He said no. When Thawne was like, what are you doing? What have you done? I was like, dude, that's how we all feel. I am so angry right now. Like shit like this makes you want to quit. <laughs> like, like this legitimately makes me want to quit. And then they got the nerve to say, I read somewhere in a magazine, they were like, oh, John Diggle is supposed to appear in the season finale of Superman and Lois, why? <laughs> I don't want to see John Diggle sh like what he's going to show up in the Spartan costume. I don't want to see that. Like why if, and then he told Thawne, he was like, Oh, he said that when he looked into the cube and he saw, he said he saw himself leading a thousand soldiers. He said he saw all this glory and all. He basically said, I have the power to change the world. And he said no, because he said that out of everything the box showed me, the one thing it didn't show me was me coming home to my family. And he chose his family over, he literally threw the box away, people. Like, you don't understand this. He threw the box away and the box disappeared. And I am so upset right now. He chose, it's like, he was like, the power, he said the cosmic power can't compare to being a father. Nobody said, there's no, there, nobody said you can't be the green arrow, the green arrow. Nobody said you can't be the green lantern and a father at the same time. Why? Why was this, this I swear to Christ. I feel like, I feel like, no, like, there is no way they teased this thing for two years and now they're just completely done with it. This has to be a swerve. Mark my words, and here's a prediction. There's gonna be a there's gonna be an episode of somebody's show where Diggle's gonna make an appearance. It's gonna be a crossover, it's gonna be on HBO Max, it's gonna be this whole big thing. Diggle's family is gonna be in trouble. His family's gonna get kidnapped by some villain or something, or his family's gonna get crushed by a meteor or by a rock or something, and the box is gonna present itself to Diggle one more time and say, hey, if you accept the power, you can save your family. Diggle's gonna, like, I'd be lying if I said my hope for him suiting up as the Green Lantern is now at 1% because that's where it's at. We're at 1% hope now, but that 1% hope, I feel like it's gonna come where 
his family's going to be in trouble and he's going to have to take the power in order to save his family because this is some straight up bullshit. And then he walked away and I'm so mad. It's like, why would you bring him on the flash just to say no? <laughs> they could have allowed us to just believe that he took the ring. They could have allowed us to believe that he didn't take the ring. This was a lot of production. Like a lot went into the scene. They made a scene out of this. They made this whole big thing out of this to the point where they put this storyline in an episode, in an already packed episode of The Flash. There's no way they're walking away from this Green Lantern shit. They're not, walk they're, 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 they're crushing our dream, our hopes and dreams now only to bring us back later. The same way how in Avengers Endgame, and you know, um, Anthony Mackie got the shield. He became Captain America. And then in the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier, he gave the shield away only to get the shield back in the season finale. And I feel like that's what we're doing with Diggle. But y'all got one more chance because like I'm ready to walk. <laughs> like I'm ready to walk. Y'all waited two years. Y'all teased this for two years. Why have him on every He was on everyone's show talking about this damn ring. He was literally on everyone. He went to Luke the first time because he said he had voices in his head. He was on Supergirl. He was on Flash. He was on he was on Superman and Lois for Christ's sake. Like he was on Batwoman and everything. They didn't do all this just for I I know when David Ramsey read the script, he was like, oh hell no, you're about to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> like David, like if if I'm David Ramsey. When I read, the moment I read that in the script, I immediately canceled my Twitter account. <laughs> because, like right before this episode aired, I promise you David Ramsey went on a hiatus from Twitter because he knew what was, he knew what was about to happen. Damn, I'm not happy about this. But that was it. <laughs> and unfortunately, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, I am sorry, but see, this is why I got the Flash review out of the way first. So, cause like, nah. Like we, we, we not doing this. <laughs> like we're not doing this. Like I'm so mad right now. And, and it's crazy because this was like one of the best episodes of the flash because there were so many moving parts, so many different things going on with so many different characters. This, this, this particular episode did something I swore I thought would never happen. Y'all made this episode made me forget. Iris was not in the episode because you know, I love me some Iris West. And if Iris West ain't on the show, then I don't want no part of it. This episode was so good, I legitimately forgot Iris wasn't there. And she's supposed to come back next week, and thank God. Share your questions, comments, and or concerns down below. Let me know what you thought about the green... Like, forget forget everything else that happened in the episode. Let me know what you thought about the Green Lantern shit. Let me know, let me know what you thought about Diggle rejecting the power. If you've been a, an Arrowverse fan from day one, how do you feel? Because I, you know... Or do you agree with me? Do you think I'm crazy? Like, I know, um, like, I forgot who it was. It might have been... It, it might have been Baby. It might have been Impact fan. I forget which one of y'all said this. Somebody said to me once in a comment on one of my reviews, they was like, damn bro it's green lantern they, they said diggle ain't never get in that ring and it's like you i guess she was right <laughs> so share your thoughts down below oh my god so we could talk about this one hit me up on twitter and or instagram always on youtube hit the notification bell so you'll get notified because miss marvel's coming up next we got miss marvel <laughs> channel we got miss marvel on the channel and next week we're doing well next week superman and lois is back so we're gonna have superman and lois flash and miss marvel and like, we'll see what so till next time give me a reason to keep hope alive <laughs> um i'll speak to y'all soon until next week i'm this <laughs>